Good morning. I'm Dana and I'm the lead animal keeper here at the Pachyderm Building and today we are celebrating Nikili Black Rhino's 31st birthday. Like I mentioned, Nikili is a black rhino. Black rhinos are found in Africa along with the other species of rhino in Africa, the white rhino. Nikili was born at the San Diego Wild Animal Park in California and came to the Brookfield Zoo when he was about four years old. He is an eastern black rhino. They are one of the five remaining species of rhino. The other three species that I didn't mention before are found in Asia, and they are the greater one-horned rhino, the Sumatran rhino, and the Javan rhino. The black rhino is considered critically endangered in the wild with around 5,000 individuals <laughs> remaining. Black rhinos are the smaller of the two African species, um, weighing between two and 3,000 pounds. They stand around five feet at the shoulder and are about 10 feet long. Even though they are such a large animal, they can run up to 30 miles an hour. Black rhinos can live into their 40s in managed care. Like I mentioned, Nikili, as you can still see, is celebrating his 31st birthday. The main difference between the two African species of rhino is their lip shape and therefore their diet. The black rhino is often called the hook-lipped rhino since their top lip is pointed and used for grabbing at branches and leaves. You can kind of see that there. Uh, they are more of a browser, which is an animal that eats off of bushes and trees, than the white rhino, which is a grazer, an animal that eats grass, and therefore has a flat upper lip to help with that foraging. Here at the Brookfield Zoo, our rhinos are fed a complete grain diet, kind of like a horse, uh, but theirs is specially formulated for rhinos, as well as both grass and alfalfa hay, which you can see here, he has a nice big pile of both. They also enjoy a wide variety of fruits, veggies, starches, and greens, which they get kind of a mixture of um, from our commissary on a daily basis. Uh, depending on the rhino and how old they are, what their dietary needs are, but they get uh, right around 50 pounds of food each a day. The classification of black and white doesn't actually refer to their skin color, as both rhinos have some shade of gray skin, um, but it's thought to be a misinterpretation of the word used to describe uh, the big wide lip of the white rhino. So while their skin is gray, depending on where the rhino lives and the color of the soil in that area will determine the color of the rhino. So it's pretty hard to appreciate right now because our rhinos are inside. Um, unless it's above 32, they can't go out and enjoy that nice mud, um, but you can appreciate it uh, back when we're open and the rhinos are out. Um, our east yard, which is our old elephant yard, has kind of a reddish soil in it. So the rhino who's housed there um, often looks a bit more red than our rhinos on the other end who um, wallow in more uh, normal black uh, colored mud. Rhinos wallow or roll around in the mud for a variety of reasons. The mud acts as a cooling agent, an exfoliant, a sunscreen, as well as an insect repellent. So we, we dodged a bullet here earlier when Nikili came around the corner uh, because they have a smelly sort of way to talk to each other. They use their poop and pee to communicate with other rhinos. Rhinos mark their territory by leaving large piles of dung or middens. They will also scent mark by spraying urine on trees and rocks. This will tell other rhinos if they are in another rhino's territory or if a female is ready to mate. Black rhinos have traditionally been considered solitary animals, but that only, pardon me, that only came together for breeding, but there is recent footage of multiple black rhinos around a water hole together, which suggests that they may be loosely social. If two rhinos were to success, successfully breed, they wouldn't see the baby for 15 months. The mother takes care of the baby rhino called a calf for two to three years. Nikili here has only sired one calf back in 2003 and his offspring, Kianga, currently lives at the Racine Zoo in Wisconsin. As I've been mentioning, Nikili and the other two rhinos that live here at the zoo are black rhinos. The other African species, the white rhino, is the only species of the five that is currently not considered endangered of going extinct. The same basic threats face all five species of rhino. Habitat loss, encroachment by people, but poaching is the largest threat. The black rhino in particular is poached heavily for its horn. Of all the species of rhino, it has the largest horn and has two of them. As is kind of mentioned in its um, scientific name, Dicerospicornis, which means two horn. 
They're poached for their horn because it's used in some traditional Eastern medicine. It's not been proven that that is um, valid science. In fact, it's been proven otherwise. Um, the horn is made of keratin, just like your fingernails. So what can you guys do to help protect our rhino friends? You can become a zookeeper like me. <laughs> no, that, that's probably the best thing you could do because it's an amazing job. Um, but really don't purchase anything made from rhino horn and support many of the foundations dedicated to the conservation and recovery of rhinos like the International Rhino Foundation and the Brookfield Zoo. Was there anything I didn't cover, Lynette, that I think needs mentioning? Yeah, so uh, do they keep their horns really sharp or do you file them down? What's the deal with that? Um, so thankfully we don't have to do any hornicuring of our rhino's horns. They do it all themselves. So each of our rhino's horns has a different shape, a different length, um, and that's just like it would be in the wild. It depends on where they live, what kind of structures they have access to to sharpen their horn on. Some rhinos prefer to have a nice long horn. Other rhinos, like Nikili here, he kind of has uh, two short horns. Um, so it just, it really depends on the rhino and where they live. Uh, what kind of predators do they have? Uh, humans are the main predator. Um, kind of like many of the big megafauna, they don't really have many um, natural predators because they're so large and they would be very difficult to take down. So um, like I mentioned earlier, he's, uh, they're normally found in Africa. So the, the big animals there that would be able to take them down if they were sick or any of their young would be like lions. Uh, but humans, unfortunately, are their largest, their largest predator. Uh, what's, what's their best scent? Um, so you can kind of tell that um, on any animal just by kind of taking a look uh, around them. Um, so I think many people know that rhinos don't have good eyesight. Um, they are not blind. Um, they can, like right now, we're close enough. He can see us. He can make us out. Um, but you can kind of tell what he's using most is his ears. You can see them moving back and forth. Um, so their hearing and actually their sense of smell um, are both their strongest senses. So they'll you know, move those ears around to pick up on sounds all around. Um, and then their sense of smell, kind of back to what I was talking about before, when they mark their territory, they'll use that to kind of figure out where other rhinos are. Um, so if you're out enjoying rhinos on a safari, you want to make sure that you are not, uh, that they're not downwind from you. What kinds of things are in his birthday cake? <laughs> The cake um, was kindly made by our commissary staff, which is our zoo nutrition staff um, here at the zoo. Uh, so we make special little ice blocks just with a little bit of food coloring to make it look, look pretty. It's got some chopped apples, chopped sweet potato in it. Um, and then I chopped up a couple different melons, honeydew, cantaloupe, and watermelon. Well, melon tends to be Rhino's favorite um, for the little accessories for his name and the, his birthday number and everything. So, pachyderm means thick skin, right? Yes, correct. So how thick is a rhino's skin? Um, supposedly two fingers thick. So if you put two fingers, it's that wide. Um, so they can be a pretty difficult animal to do um, injections on and blood draws on just because it is difficult to get, to get needles through. So it's very important that we do um, positive reinforcement training with our rhinos um, so that they're used to that that behavior and can help our veterinary staff out. So what other types of training do you do with? <laughs> Let them get it. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah. What other types of training do you do with the rhinos? Um, so it kind of depends. We talk with our veterinary staff usually once a year to kind of touch base, see what's a priority for them. And that's not just for the rhinos, that's for any of the animals here. Um, the biggest things that are, are helpful to have on a voluntary basis are blood draws. Um, because you can learn a lot about an animal from, from drawing their blood, um, as well as um, injection training. A lot of our animals um, get yearly <laughs> injections um, to keep them healthy, just like your cat or dog at home. Um, so they get some of the common in injections like your, your cat and dog, like rabies. Um, some of the other things, it'll depend on if you have a pregnant animal, you could do um, ultrasound training. Uh, that's a little bit more difficult with a rhino because they're large and again, like you mentioned before, their skin is really thick. Um, so once the baby grows big enough that it 
it's almost too hard to see on a um, abdominal ultrasound. Um, and then there's just things that we do every day when we come in and, and feed our animals and look at our animals and interact with them. Um, just a lot of desensitization of letting us touch their face, their eyes, their ears, their legs, their feet, um, so that if any problems should arise, um, it'll make training um, for, let's say, ear drops or eye drops or um, trimming their nails. It'll make that a whole lot easier since they're already used to us um, touching all those parts of their body. King enjoys getting uh, scratches. Does Nikhili like it as much? He prefers scratches. Oh. So, Sorry. <laughs> no. just on his um, they all, uh, our three rhinos are actually very um, engaging. They really like uh, keeper interaction, whether it's hand feeding or scratches and scratches. Um, yeah, you'd be surprised for an animal that has such thick skin. Um, it's very, has, it seems to have a lot of receptors in it. They seem to really enjoy it. Um, there are a few areas on their body where the skin is not quite so thick, like right behind their ears, in their inguinal area. Um, and they really like to be, to be petted uh, around their ears and on their faces, like right by their little smashy lips. Um, yeah, they really, they really like to interact with their keepers. And um, black rhinos are actually considered the most dangerous or... Um, yeah, most dangerous uh, of the rhinos because they uh, have a really high flight factor and want to charge and bluff. Um, but ours are very, very gentle and fun to fun to work closely with. How long has Nikili been here at Brookfield Zoo? Uh, so he came when he was about four, and he uh, is 31, so 27 years. My quality college education math is correct <laughs> so they have prehensile lips and uh, that makes them really gentle when they're picking stuff up how much dexterity do they have with their lips there you go so like he there was just a little piece of ice um, on the ground um, it's pretty as he drops it <laughs> help me out um, yeah, they can pick up individual grapes. Um, and what they do is they just use that, that top prehensile lip to kind of get it to their bottom lip and then work those, work those lips together. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about a rhino? Um, my favorite thing about a rhino, I, I just love how big they are. I really like to, and yet gentle. Um, I think it's really impressive that an animal, so he's nearly, 3,000 pounds. Um, I mean, you can see the force that they have, you know, when you saw him crushing that ice block and he may do it again. <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> um, it's just impressive the force they have and yet how gentle they can be when they interact with us. Um, <laughs> they're so, they get so intent when they need to break something. <laughs> you, like see the whites of their eyes. Um, I don't, I don't know. I just, I've always liked really big animals. They've, um, I started here went to work with giraffes and um, eventually moved on to rhinos. And I like animals that are challenging to work with because they, they have that kind of flight response. Um, so that can often make an animal a little bit more challenging to work with because you have to build up a lot of trust. So, um, yeah, that's why. I want to thank you very much for joining us today and helping us celebrate Nikili's 31st birthday. Have a great day.